Let's take a look at how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. They ask us to subtract and simplify your answer. 5 over 6 minus 1 over 12. Okay, now notice when they said unlike denominators, well, denominators is the bottom of the fraction. So one of them has 6 as the bottom number, the other has 12. Those are unlike, meaning they're different. And the rule is, when you're adding or subtracting, you need to have a common denominator. So that means we need to rewrite these so that the bottom number or the denominator of both fractions is exactly the same, right? That would be our common denominator. All right, now the easiest way to find a common denominator is to think of your least common multiple. Okay, the least common multiple is the smallest number that these two things both go into. So if I'm trying to find the least common multiple for 6 and 12, well, I can count by 6, right? That would be like 6, 12, 18, and so on. And I can count by 12s, 12, 24, 36, and so on. And what I'm trying to do, remember least means the smallest, Common means it's in both lists, and multiple, well, we, these are multiples of the numbers because we're counting by those, right? Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18. Multiples of 12, 12 are 12, 24, 36, and so on. So all I need to do now to find the least common one is find the smallest number in both lists. Well, notice 12 is in both lists. So 12 is my least common multiple. And that means it's also the number I'm going to use to make a common denominator. So I'm going to try to write both of these fractions as over 12. Okay, now, if you're really good with your math skills, you might have noticed that 6 goes into 12. So that's another hint that 12 is going to be your common denominator. If you notice that one of them goes into the other one, well, then that bigger number is going to be the common denominator. And if you're not sure, you can always go back, list out your multiples, and look for the least common multiple, or the smallest number that's a multiple of both. Okay, and then from here, the second fraction is not going to change at all. It was already 1 over 12. I just need to change the first fraction, 5 over 6, into something over 12. Now the rule is, whatever you did to the bottom number, you have to do the same thing to the top number. So to get from 6 to 12, I would have to multiply 6 times 2, right? 6 times 2 would give me 12. So if I multiplied the denominator or the bottom of my fraction by 2, I have to do the exact same thing on the top to keep it equal. I also have to multiply the top of my fraction by 2. So 5 times 2, that would give me 10. Okay, and now I have a problem I can subtract 10 over 12 minus 1 over 12. And when you're adding or subtracting with your fractions, the bottom number stays the same. Because remember, that's just telling us out of 12. So our answer is also going to be out of 12. So if we have 10 and we're subtracting 1, 10 minus 1 is going to leave us with 9. So our answer is 9 out of 12. Now notice they asked us to simplify. So I want to see if I can simplify 9 out of 12 even more. To do that, I'm going to look for a common factor or a number that goes into both 9 and 12. And they do have a common factor, right? They both divide evenly by 3. So 3 is a factor of both 9 and 12. Right? 9 would be 3 times 3. And 12 would be 3 times 4. Okay, and that helps me simplify because if I cancel out my factor of 3 on the top with that same number, that same factor of 3 on the bottom, that's going to leave me with 3 over 4. So that would be my simplified answer, 3 fourths. Okay, so this time we want to subtract 4 fifths minus 7 tenths. Now, if I wasn't sure what I should use as a common denominator, 
I could make that list, right? I could count by fives, five, 10, 15, but notice 10, right? That was what my other number was. Five goes into 10. So my common denominator here is going to be 10. So let's write both of these numbers as something over 10. Now the second one I don't need to change, it was already out of 10, so I'm gonna leave that as 7 tenths. For my first fraction, I changed the denominator. It was five and I made it a 10. So that means I doubled it, right, or multiplied five times two, because five times two gives me 10. So I need to do the exact same thing, double the top or multiply it by two. Okay, well four times two would give me eight. So I wanna say eight tenths minus 7 tenths. Okay, and when you're subtracting, the bottom number does not change. It just means our answer is going to be out of 10, and we just subtract right across the top. So 8 minus 7 gives me 1, and I can't simplify that at all, so my answer is going to be 1 tenth. Four fifths minus three tenths. Okay. Well, if I count by fives, right, 5, 10, 15, I notice that 10 is going to be my least common multiple, right? 10 is the smallest number that both 5 and 10 go into. So I'm going to use that as my common denominator. So 3 tenths doesn't need to change at all. I can leave that the way it is. And here, if I went from 5 to 10, I multiplied the denominator or bottom number by 2, right? 2 times 5 gives me 10. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top. 2 times 4 would give me 8. So 8 over 10 has the same value as 4 over 5. And then when we subtract, remember the denominator does not change. Our answer is still going to be out of 10. And I just subtract the numerator or the top numbers. 8 minus 5 gives me I'm sorry, eight minus three gives me five. Okay, and then I can simplify this because five goes into both five and 10, right? Five is five times one, and 10 is five times two. So if I cancel out my common factor of five, that leaves me with one half or one out of two. Okay, we've seen the common denominator between 10 and 5 a few times, right? If we count by those numbers, 10, 20, 5, 10, 15. So 10 would be our least common multiple. That's the number we want to use for our common denominator. So I want to write both fractions as something out of 10. Now the first one doesn't need to change. It was already 9 tenths. The second one, to get from 5 to 10, well, I would have to multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. So if I do the same thing on the top, multiply by 2, 2 times 2 gives me 4. So I want to think of this as 9 tenths minus 4 tenths. Remember, the denominator does not change when you add or subtract. It just means our answer is going to be out of 10. And on the top, we're going to subtract 9 minus 4, and that's going to give me 5. Okay? And 5 over 10, we saw this just a second ago, reduces to 1 half. All right, this time we have 2 fifths minus 1 tenth. Okay, well, our common denominator between 5 and 10 should be 10, right? If you think of counting by fives, 5, 10, 15. So 10 is the smallest number that 5 and 10 both go into. I don't need to change the second one at all. Here, to get from 5 to 10, I multiplied by 2, right? 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top. 2 times 2 is 4. And then when we subtract, the denominator or bottom number is still 10. That just means my answer is out of 10. And I'm going to subtract 4 minus 1, and that gives me 3. So my answer here would be 3 tenths. 